Hey everybody, what's going on? OGK here, and I today I am bringing you the fourth part of my uh, Profit by Breeding Axes in uh, Axes in Axie Infinity video series. And today we're going to be diving into the hatches. So if you guys have been following along with the first three parts, you would know that we are on our second cycle of breeding. And this time we bred out five axes. So let's not waste any time. Let's actually jump right in here. Let's take a peek at what we got. So you can see here we have five hatches. We have uh, basically the whole top row are all fresh hatches. And then also the axie on the bottom left is another one of the babies from this breed. Now I've gone ahead and I've ranked these axes uh, in order of what I think is best to worst. So maybe what we'll do here is we will dive into each axie specifically and we will kind of walk through its body parts, walk through what's good about it, what's bad about it, um, and go from there. So we'll start with number five. As you can see here, we got a beast, uh, we got Pocky. So we got some of the things that we were looking for, but um, being ranked number five obviously is our worst hatch out of, out of the ones that we bred this round. Uh, you can see it actually pulled Topaz, Tiny Fan, and Double Talk, which are all parts that were undesirable in this breed. Um, so really what you want to do with this Axie is you're not going to want to breed it out again, and you're going to want to just dump this Axie off. So whether you sell it on the marketplace, or you use it in a giveaway, or um, maybe you give it to a friend, whatever you really want to do with it, that's up to you, but we don't want to we don't want to use this one moving forward. It's not going to be strong for us in PvP. It's not going to be good to continue to breed. Um, so really, you just want to you just want to dump this one off. Um, the probabilities weren't very high on Topaz, Tiny Fan, and Double Talk, but hey, that's the that's kind of the name of the game with breeding. It is a little bit of luck involved, um, unless you have 100% perfect genetics. So. That's number five. Then we'll jump into number four. This one hatched out as a plant. And uh, if you did want to take a look at the parents, you could go back, watch breeding video number three. But we got a lot of good parts on this one that we really liked. Uh, Little Peas is, is great. That's what we were looking for. Innocent Lamb is, is a fantastic card at this point in time. Uh, Confidence, good. Pocky's what we wanted. Goldfish is great. And then the Post Flight. The post flight is absolutely not what we wanted. There was only a 3% chance to roll this, and unfortunately we hit the 3%. So um, it's just really bad luck on the on the tail card, uh, which is what makes this Axie number four. Now to keep things moving along, we move into Axie number three. This one hatched out in a beast body. Um, it came out with Zeal Eyes, which is not our preferred um, our preferred eye set. Um, but we do have little peas in the R1 and the R2, which is pretty good. Uh, Innocent lamb um, on the on the dominant gene, which is great. Tiny fan in the recessives. That's not what you want to see, but um, because the dominant is what we want, that makes up 37.5% of the potential breed in the future. So um, it's great to have that. Double talk is, again, not desirable. Um, we, we would view double talk as a miss. There was about 9% chance to hit double talk, so um, just kind of unlucky here on this one. Um, but we did get a really strong Pocky line, which is great. That's uh, that's like as good as we could have hoped for. We got Hero and Risky Beast on the back, which is also fine. Uh, Hero is what we were looking for. Um, Risky Beast is not great, but it's also not the worst. Uh, and then we have Cottontail, and you can see that post-flight pulled through into this recessive gene as well. Um, so this one actually was rated number three. Um, this one, I would say, is probably one that you would dump as well. And I didn't mention for number four. Number four, you would also dump. Um, number three is starting to get into a point where it's like, it's interesting. If you wanted to run like a really cheap breed or you found something on the marketplace that was, that was cheap um, and it had a really strong innocent lamb and maybe uh, little peas in the, in the dominant slot, and potentially axi kiss in the in the in the mouth for the dominant. Um, maybe you would want to pair these two together and just run some cheap breeds and just hope that you get lucky. Um, like I said, the pocky super strong. So this one you could potentially breed with something really cheap, but um, if you wanted to guarantee good genes, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend to breed this one. But it is still potentially usable. 
Um, but in, in this situation, I think I will dump it. Um, remains to be seen. You never know what's going to happen. But then we move into some things that actually turned out pretty good. And we're moving into axi number two here. And this is our plant. And it didn't come out 100% perfect. And the only reason that I say that is because it rolled Little Branch instead of Pocky. Ideally, what we were looking for is Pocky uh, on the plant. But all of the other moves came out great. And then as a follow-up, all the genes are really, really good as well. Um, the R1 Topaz is the only thing that kind of stands out and then a 3% on Shiitake post-flight, but um, realistically the rest of the cards are pretty good. Um, and if we were picking and choosing back parts, we would probably want to take the Hero over the Ronin, but uh, overall pretty good Axie, happy with this one, um, and would be carrying the breeding line forward using this one. Um, it's very close to what we wanted, just slightly, slightly off. Um, so number two, I would say that's a good Axie. We're happy with that one. And then moving on to number one, the best of the bunch. Um, this one came out in a beast body. Um, we were ideally hoping for plant bodies, but uh, the fact that it's in a beast body is still good. Um, we got all of the moves that we were looking for. So we got Little Peas, Inno Lamb, Confident, Pocky, Hero, Cottontail. Uh, so came out beautiful on that side. So this would be a meta Axie for PvP, um, which is really why you're trying to breed these. Um, the more meta PvP Axies you can get, the more they're going to be worth on the market or the more they're going to be worth to, your, to you or to your teammates. Um, so this is, this, is, this is good. This is money. Um, I, unfortunately, the bad part about it is it's not the best for breeding because it has some junk in the R1. Um, it has a lagging and an inkling, which both wouldn't be ideal. But that being said, because the dominant genes are still so strong and the dominant genes make up 37.5% of your total breed, which is pretty good when you're considering each parent accounts for 50%, um, this one is pretty good. And um, you could still breed this one. I think it would have more value on the market as a zero breed. But that being said, uh, you could breed this one out again. Um, again, you would want to you would want to pair it with something that has a strong innocent lamb and something that has a strong pocky or just strong horn and strong ear cards. But um, overall, this is a fantastic axie, good for PvP and and decent for breeding. Um, I'd give it like a seven out of ten to breed it moving forward. So um, this would be the second best one for breeding. The last one that we had was a little bit better genes for breeding, but this one um, came out with all of the parts that we want. So this one would be a strong breed as well. Um, having the dominant gene uh, genes how you want them, I think is ideal. So um, those are the five hatches. Uh, so quickly to run through again, number five, um, this white beast, uh, kind of scuffed, but it is what it is. Number four being this, this plant, um, lots of good parts, but just unfortunately hit a post flight. Um, number three would be the double talk Pocky hero. Um, decent Axie, not too bad overall. Um, number two is the plant with Little Branch, Ronin, Confident, um, pretty solid Axie and we'll just look at that those genes again because these genes are gorgeous. Um, that's what you want to see on the genes for sure. Um, like I said, just unfortunately hit Little Branch uh, and maybe a little bit unfortunate on Ronin but if we could have got the Pocky, the hero, this guy would be the best of the breed but um, can't pick and choose unfortunately and that's the, that's the game we play when we breed. And then number one is going to be this beast where we hit all the perfect parts. So um, I hope that you guys have learned something from this breeding series. Um, as a reminder, always make sure to sell off everything that you're not going to use moving forward, whether you're just dumping it just to get rid of it or um, trying to maximize your profit or you're going to breed it forward again. If you don't, as a rule of thumb, if you don't have a plan for the Axie moving forward, get rid of it or else it's just going to sit in your inventory and it's just going to kind of hold up your liquidity and ideally you want to have as much liquidity as possible so you're able to react and make decisions on the fly depending on some balance changes that might come out or maybe a new meta kind of starts to pop up uh, and you want to capitalize on that before it gets fully bred out or um, everybody has one of those axes so um, that's that's a wrap from me um, I will be casting this weekend I'm gonna be casting LSL Guild Rush season 4 so if you guys are interested in some competitive Axie action, make sure to check it out. And I will catch you all on the next one. Have a good afternoon, good day, good evening, everybody. And we'll talk again soon. Peace.